Thank you for joining us for this year's institutional program review, uh, now our second annual gathering of cabinet leaders to present their plans and budget requests for the upcoming fiscal year. We implemented uh, this new format a year ago, and we received overwhelmingly positive feedback. Many people told us they appreciated seeing in one presentation how Stockton's division worked together to develop the set of requests for the upcoming year, and this is the intent to provide an institutional perspective regarding Stockton's planning and budget process, uh, one that's holistic rather than segmented uh, and focused on the future rather than the successes of our past. For the second year in a row, the program review process has remained a truly collaborative effort. We began last fall with each division gathering requests from individual units and departments. Last month in February, senior leaders sat down for a mini budget retreat to study various requests from each division. Oh, excuse me. Caught it. Two weeks ago, we recommended we uh, reconvene for a full strategic planning retreat. What you will see over the next 45 minutes or so is a result of this um, cooperative process. I know I speak for my colleagues when I say that we are glad so many people are here today to see the results of this teamwork. Uh, before I turn the stage over to President Kesselman, We'd like to continue a tradition that we began last year by premiering this year's highlight video. Uh, there have been amazing accomplishments at Stockton over the past year, uh, success stories in which our students, faculty, and staff have played prominent roles. Collectively, they help tell the story of an institution that continues to reach new levels of success and achievement. So please enjoy this exceptionally well done highlight video courtesy of our colleagues in university relations and marketing and information technology services.
now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Harvey Kesselman, our president, who will provide a, an overview on some enrollment uh, information, uh, budget, and some planning ideas. So, Dr. Kesselman, please. Is please. that, where's the... What it, that seems as if that would be about five years enveloped in one. The fact that it's just one year is pretty incredible. And that's obviously a testament to the work that each and every one of you do. So kudos go to you for all the events and all the achievements and all the accomplishments that you just saw. Before I begin, I would be remiss if I did not introduce to everyone our chairperson of the Board of Trustees who flew in last night to be here today, and I know we're going out to Dallas tomorrow, uh, Maddie Dininger, who is here with us today, our chair. And I want to congratulate each and every one of you who have participated in the process to develop the budget requests that we will review today. Um, it truly is an institutional uh, planning effort that tries to tie in what we say our goals and objectives are with the uh, budgetary priorities that we are looking for for next fiscal year. And each and every one of these individuals, along with all the folks that work together as part of this, have put together what I think is a really impressive package. Now, I have the, um, the, the sobering news to provide, and then they get the chance to tell all the good things that they've asked for. But it's important that we have a reality check as we enter the future, uh, because because of conditions that you're reading about each and every day. Uh, it, just in this morning's paper alone, for those who did not get a chance to read it, ACC, Atlantic Cape Community College, had to lay off 24 individuals and also slashed their budget by over 15%. This is not an uncommon thing that's going on in higher education throughout not only New Jersey, but the United States. And the fact that we are not doing that and are going in quite a different direction, I think is a testament to the incredible work and the incredible achievements and accomplishments that we've realized at Stockton. Uh, four key points that I'm going to talk about, and I'm only going to be up here for about 10 minutes or so. One, our fall 2017 enrollment outlook. Uh, which, to say the least, is impressive. Uh, state appropriations, not so much, and we'll talk a little bit about them. Uh, current financial overview, uh, so that you really get a flavor, and some of you have seen some of this, a flavor of what we are dealing with as we move to the future, and then sort of our thoughts for the next five years. All right, undergraduate enrollment. We are having a robust, I mean a robust, freshman and transfer our undergraduate um, admissions process this year. As you can see, we have great gains as a result of our efforts in North Jersey. We're particularly impressed with this. Um, we have a new fellow in admissions, Ryan Terrell, who has done an incredible job on behalf of the admissions up in the North Jersey area, as well as the marketing campaigns that have been quite strategic this year, and the work of everyone in our enrollment management office to realize these kinds of increases throughout all of New Jersey. Um, so for that, let's give a warm round of applause. There's John, Allison, Jean, Chris, all the folks over here. Raise your hand. You're doing a great job. He just told me that Sunday's open house program will be the largest probably in the history of the institution. And we just followed, if you, for those who do know, uh, a day in a life, which also was a magnificent day that was here just last week. And let's take a look at our graduate programs. We have two new graduate programs, at least one for the fall of 2017, which is the alternate route MAED program, as well as the new MS in data science and strategic analytics. Uh, and that requires state approval in uh, hopefully this term, and we anticipate that will. Our application submitted for graduate school, and again, this is not, uh, this is not happening everywhere, uh, up 11%. 21% uh, admitted students and 26% enrollment deposits. So our enrollment for the fall term looks good. That is critically important in these times. Direct states appropriations, not so much. We are now receiving this year what's been recommended by the governor to the legislature is $18.39 million. If you recall, a couple years ago, we were actually cut 14%. What we did was turn that around and get it all of the adjustments in the entire sector to 7% cut, and that's remained stable this particular year. But $18.3 million, if I compare that to, to years ago, in the 80s, we used to get about $26 million from the state of New Jersey as our direct appropriation to put this in perspective, and a whole lot's have changed in the last umpteen years, whatever that is, what, 20, 30, a lot of years, 37 years or so. This is what it looks like. 
This is important to understand. We now only, and fiscal year 18 will be less. It will drop to under 10%. So right now, in fiscal year 17, 10% of our budget, okay, is covered by the appropriation. That's it. Meaning 90% tuition and fees, entrepreneurial activities, and all the other different kinds of ways that we generate revenue, whether it's through uh, SASE or whatever the different items that we are to generate revenue to support having the kind of commitment that we do to the kind of institution we have. Meaning what? 70% full-time faculty to 30% adjunct faculty. The fact that we have not had one layoff or even a threat of layoff, that we've increased the number of staff members here. We've increased the number of faculty members here. We've increased uh, the number of activities at the institution. We are building, as everyone knows, and we're able to do that getting less support from the state. And that's because we are doing things more efficiently, more effectively, and folks are putting out the effort to make that happen. What's it look like? One of the things that we looked at is, if you look at 15, 16, and 17 projected, our operational revenues, this is not our, all of our budgets, but our basic operational revenues, you will see an increase from 200 million to 207 million. Our expenses, this is important, 197, fiscal year 16, it went up about three or four million dollars, and you'll see we leveled it off. We tried to hold expenses rather, relatively level, and we've been able to do that this year. You'll see our operating surplus. It was 2.5 and 15, 2.4 and 16, 4.4 million in operating surplus. That's good, but that money goes towards deferred maintenance. Deferred maintenance is fixing all the different things on the 2,000 acre campus in Manahawkin, in Hamilton, in Atlantic City, and in Woodbine, and all the different areas and, uh, and, and internal responsibilities that we have, everything from infrastructure charges and the like. And what we're trying to do now is to set aside in our regular budget $9 million a year that we have so we don't have to worry about salary savings and we don't have to worry about the kinds of things we used to do in the past to fund that. So we're weaning ourselves off of that so that we're beginning to move this figure down. Obviously, we don't want to be in a deficit situation. That's where our investment account comes into play, to be able to cover that. But that's not our goal. Our goal must be, this is not sustainable, our goal must be to have a balanced budget. And knowing that the state is certainly not going to provide additional funding, okay, we then must grow in order to make this happen. What are the priority requests? These were the requests after after the cabinet whittled down the initial request. And by that, I mean that each of the senior members here in an all-day marathon session worked with the various aspects of the budget to break it down to the priority requests. These are over and above what's happening now for fiscal year 18. Let me say this again. Requests. They're not approved until everything is approved because we have to make sure that we get the appropriation that we say we're going to get. We have to make sure the enrollment that we anticipate is going to be where it's at. But this is where it's at. We, we're looking at a $3.125 million increase in operating dollars. You'll see how that's broken out. And then capital in the area of $10.590 million, which includes, by the way, a substantial amount of money that we have to designate towards Seaview to renovate, given the fact that many of the windows in Seaview, in fact, ultimately over the next two to three years, every single window in Seaview will need to be replaced. That's not inexpensive. 6% over our fiscal year 17 budget. Next five years, what are we looking at? All right. Projected expenses, obviously there'll be, you know, modest inflationary increases. And by that I mean everything from salary to non-personnel. There'll be modest inflationary increases over the next five years. Increased academic funding to support enrollment growth. If we are to grow, and we are to grow, we're going to need to have more faculty and staff lines in order to support that. Nine million we want to set aside as part of our operating budget for deferred maintenance per year and then additional funding for expansion plans in the academic quad, Atlantic City Gateway Project, and for those who know, we're also going to do a, a more modest expansion, but we are expanding in Manahawkin. Current model, this has been our historical model. That is a projected 2% increase in total headcount, and then a 2% annual increase in tuition and fees. For those who watch the state system, you'll see that there are a number of legislators who have put forth legislation to cap 
tuition and fees at 2%. We're hoping they don't do that. It doesn't help your ratings when they do that, but one never knows, particularly in lame duck sessions, what might happen with the New Jersey legislature. We are hoping they don't do that, but we are committed to keep these kinds of rates at 2%. Projected result, if we only do this, here's what's going to happen. We'll continue okay, to have multi-million dollar budget deficit. We'll continue to have a possible ratings downgrade. You just read that the state is going to have another ratings downgrade. Reduced operating budgets, and then less dollars for campus maintenance. That's what it'll look like through fiscal year 21 based upon projected expenses and projected revenues if we only stay at two and two. That's where, and that's a deficit. We don't want to be in that position. Hence, new model, strategic enrollment growth, and you're beginning to see the numbers. We've become very, very aggressive in the area of freshmen and transfer. 4% annual increase in total headcount. That does not necessarily mean all new students. It also can mean improved retention rates. Really important, improved retention rates. So all the activities you do to support that helps the overall picture and keeping students here until they graduate. That's number two. More part-time students, more continuing education. There are different ways to make up this, this growth, but we need to think about a 4% annual increase in total headcount, keeping the 2%. If we're able to move new for any of those figures, if we get a larger appropriation, if we get more lines, if we go to 2.5%, then of course the annual increase in headcount can be a slightly more modest. But in order to balance the budget, in order to ensure the $9 million in maintenance, deferred maintenance, and in order to sure, ensure the continued growth in the number of faculty and staff at the institution, particularly after eventually there will be a uh, contract, we need to ensure that there is a growth model. This will allow us to eliminate the deficit, includes $4 million for, for faculty lines, and then the proper maintenance of this campus facility, which means a positive impact on the quality of life for each and every one of us. That's what it'll look like if we do that. By 21, we should have a balanced budget without any kind of major, major decrease in expenses. That's the other way to do it. ACC, unfortunately, had to do that last night. And they still didn't eliminate their structural deficit. They still have a structural deficit after eliminating 24 staff positions yesterday. That is not uncommon. Look at the Pennsylvania system. We're doing it by growing. And that's the only way we can do it without hurting ourselves on the expense side. These are the two models. We are shooting for, and this should not be an alien number. Because if you go back to Vision 2010, some 15 years ago, when we said by the year 2020, we should be at around 10,000 students. We will need to grow to 10,000 students to meet what we've just laid out by 21, fiscal year 21. I know Laurie and, Char and Charles, who have been meeting all the schools, have been going and using these figures. And this is why we need to do that, to, in order to eliminate the structural deficit, continue with the deferred ma maintenance, to continue to add faculty and staff lines and the kinds of things that we need to do. We're studying what resources are needed for us to grow to 10,000 students. Quad, AC Gate Gateway, and Manahawkin represent a 25% increase in space capacity at, this inst at, at the university, which has multiple campuses now. Okay, and what we're going to try to do is analyze dozens of ideas on how to do this in a very effective, efficient way, using the best and the brightest of folks in here, and we'd like to implement, like we did for 2020, a type fund that rewards and supports academic and marketing initiatives that help the institution advance to meet these goals and objectives. That's where we're going to need everyone in this room's best thinking to move in that direction. And now, I'd like to turn it over to Academic Affairs so that Laurie can describe for all of you exactly what she intends to do to, to uh, help meet these goals and objectives. Thank you, President Kesselman. I'm so thrilled to be here for my first program review at Stockton. What a wonderful place. Um, it's just been a great year. I've learned so much from all of you. And um, I'm glad you all turned out today to hear about what we're going to do in academic affairs. So I always develop guiding principles whenever I think about decision making. And so the guiding principles were fairly easy. Diversity and inclusion, 
It's something we've been talking about a lot this year. Uh, something that's important to me personally because I came from an underrepresented group in the sciences. And I can see the difference it makes when somebody from an underrepresented group is around the table. So we've made that a high priority. Each future class that we have at Stockton will be more diverse than the one before, and we need to be ready for that. We need to be ready to support our students and to help them to succeed. We have ambitious enrollment growth, 10,000 by 21. Uh, I think it's a heavy lift, but I also believe that we can do it because we have so much to offer here at Stockton. We have unique programming, um, and we have very talented faculty who care deeply about their students. That's what you need to make it work, and we can do that. We need to be smart about it, so we don't just want to open the doors and let them all in. We want to be smart about it, we want to be strategic. We want to make sure that the programs that we are going to succeed. So we're going to align our resources with enrollment goals. So the president has been saying this since I got here, we need to grow and we will. <laughs> when we think about growth in academic affairs, it's important to think about the whole campus, um, not just Atlantic City, not just Galloway. So I've spent a lot of my time in this first year talking to all of you about what you would like to do for us to meet our mission in Atlantic City. That's only part of the piece of the puzzle. Um, we want to do things in Atlantic City because they make sense there, because of the place that we have there, because we're an anchor institution in, in that community. We want to do the things in Galloway that make sense here. So when we talk about growth, we want to look at that overall big number. Okay? It's not just Atlantic City, it's all of those pieces. So I want to tell you a little bit about where we are with the Atlantic City so everyone can be up to speed on that. Um, when I came last summer and was talking with all of you, a message that I heard was that you wanted to be clear about our mission and our vision for our expansion in Atlantic City. So the president and I created a vision statement, which you all weighed in on and endorsed. And um, we used that then to do a call for proposals and ask you how you'd like to contribute to that mission. We received 30 proposals. It was such an exciting and energetic response. 10 were for academic programs, uh, 20 for other co-curricular and uh, academic support services, community engagement type of activities, the things we really love to do at Stockton. We have worked with the task force and various groups on campus so that now we know what we're gonna do in the fall of 18. Okay, that's kind of our soft opening in that I don't think we'll be at full capacity at that time, but we know where we're going to start. And the experimental scientist in me likes to do an experiment and see what's gonna happen. Um, I think we can do all the research we might want to do, but we have to put something there, see where the students go. So in the fall of 18, we will have our Masters of Social Work um, in the new uh, academic space. They will move from Carnegie to the new academic space. We will have some courses in both business studies and hospitality and tourism management. We're looking at courses that successful students took in their junior, senior year, so we can put a, a set of courses, and students could, in principle, do all of their coursework in Atlantic City for the semesters that they're there. Uh, we have the uh, LEAD program, Organizational Leadership. That's going to move from its location in the Seaview out to Atlantic City. This one here I'm very excited about, the LIBA program, a program in liberal arts. Um, it is innovative and unique, like the things we like to do at Stockton. has a track in community leadership and civic engagement. Uh, the students can complete this in three years. So we're very excited to see that they can uh, spend their summers and their semesters in Atlantic City applying what they're learning in the classroom to the community. Um, so before I talk about the numbers in our program review, I, I want to show the big clouds. We have existing resources. That's all the people in this room and more. And the new resources we're asking and that are coming our way are smaller, <laughs> right? So when you think of the process, you really need to think of existing resources. So I spent a lot of time this year talking with the deans and working with, with the deans about how we can't just fill replacements right away. We need to pull the money back, think carefully about where we're going and how we're growing, and uh, allocate the resource where we need to. Okay, so with that in mind, um, I asked the deans and everyone to put in a lot of requests. Ask for everything. So, you know, ask for that replacement line that maybe you thought you had, but maybe you won't get, right? So we got a lot of requests, 5.2 million, but the amount I put forward was only 1.5, and that's because we did a lot of this reallocation of existing resources um, to get things moving and that you put a, forward a smaller ask. We want to keep our tuition low for our students uh, and all of those things. So that's why that number is what it is. But the good thing about it is I did pretty good in terms of stuff is still on the table. So I think we put the right things forward there um, and so forth. So this existing resource realignment is going to be ongoing. So we really um, want to do that as we grow and as we grow in different areas. 
So what's new uh, here? My first and highest priority was the Vera King Ferris Visiting Professorship. So we are, want to establish this. It's a visiting professorship of a faculty member who could come here to help our efforts in um, improving diversity on our campus. They could spend a year as a visiting professor, teach at Stockton, um, and work on a project related to um, inclusion and diversity. And we hope to recruit them here. I mean, that's one of the strategies that we, we would do. Um, also new for the following uh, coming year, programs that are new that will generate new enrollment immediately because we know there are students that are coming and the programs are here. So health science faculty in Manahawkin and a couple of addition positions for the following year that we will search next year. Computer sciences, which is growing very fast, uh, exercise science, counseling psychology, the question mark is there because that program's not approved yet. Okay, and so we're still through approval process, but if we put that program in, in an Atlantic City, we're certainly going to resource it. So that's going to be on there. I wanna show you many of the things we did from existing resources, so you'll know that, that I'm really talking, I'm really doing what I'm talking about. So we had some new lines approved in writing, mathematics, business, criminal justice, computer science, and the LEAD program. Again, from pulling existing resources and reallocating them. Um, also, as we go forward, and I'm getting the deans more used to this idea, we can plan further for the year out in using our existing resources very strategically. Um, in terms of staff, we have requests again to support the new program that we know is going to be there, communication disorders, nursing, um, and academic affairs internship coordinator that will assist all of the programs with um, obtaining internships. Also, um, a simulation laboratory technician. We do a really cool thing here at Stockton where we have actors who go and help nursing students. And so um, we're going to resource that program. Again, that's something that will help the whole institution. Also, we're gonna to continue to look at existing resources and I'm going to work very closely with the deans in aligning them with enrollment growth. Um, finally, in non-salary items, new items related to accreditation that we need, attending veterinarian training and things like that to keep us in business. Um, new items related to existing enrollment growth, um, related to the areas, the sciences, for example. They're growing largely because the health sciences are growing. So we've been, um, we'll be putting some resources in there to keep that moving ahead. Also, um, new items related to the re enrollment growth in the LEAD program and the grad program. And I think that's the end of my presentation. I hand it over to Tomasa. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Great. I'm just going to stand. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for coming. It's, uh, it's always a pleasure to do program review. I'm part of that generation that used to do an hour and a half, so you know I'm absolutely delighted that we're only going to be here for a few minutes. And I promise you that. <laughs> Okay, so you, you have heard, and um, we all, um, at the beginning of the, the year, uh, asked to our staff to think about what they need for the year to put in the request. Then we try to match and making sure that those requests are to support the goals and the objectives that we have for the year. And obviously, the requests are always come in a little bit larger than that that we can fund. Uh, I had the... Uh, honor of not having to be at the table this year when they cut the pie. Um, John, thank you very much. You were there and you put up a good fight for us and I'm, I'm very appreciative of that. And there were many others in the, in the division who pulled for me uh, while I was away. So leadership, share leadership, always work. Um, our uh, requests are obviously uh, to, to support we have five goals, basically, they're there to obviously to support the enrollment, to make sure that we have a staff that is completely trained, and I haven't moved this around, uh, that is trained and ready to support the students and what their needs are, make sure that our curricular program, co-curricular program is matching what the curricular and, and the people in the classroom, the faculty in the classroom, what they're doing, and basically to make sure that we're up to date and state of the art in that. Technology is a, is a request and, and a must have as we, as we, our students, we don't want our students to come in better trained than we are. So we want to make sure that we always upgrade in the area of technology. And there's always that fifth goal that we keep open to the emerging trends of, of the profession, which is basically right now we're focusing Atlantic City and growing and, and obviously the growing enrollments um, are our priority and our objective. 
Um, the ask this year, uh, I think, came up to about $800,000, and I'm not even going to show you those numbers because they're scary. Uh, uh, John went to the table and uh, narrowed down, down uh, to basically the areas that we need to support. We have put a lot of time and effort in um, looking over our athletic program to make sure that we enhance that area. Uh, we found that, that there definitely needs additional support, and we are asking, in fact, the, the $215,000 to support uh, the athletic areas. There is um, requests. Uh, we have a very robust student support services in, the, in, in health. And we uh, purchased those services from the medical center. And it's, it's, not, a, it's not a cheap uh, project. It's, it's a very expensive ordeal. So we have to keep increasing in that area. At the same time, we also have to keep up with the technology that they need to continue to be accountable for, for the services that we provide to the students and accountable for the way that we spend the money. The Learning Access Program is a mandated program. You all know it's, a, it's the ADA. is how we um, uh, comply with the American with Disabilities Act, and that program is always in continued need. And uh, basically, technology, of course, is, is where the, the needs are growing. Uh, so that is an ask for 103000 So see, I came in cheap this year. Um, because Charles did away with my pool and my natatorian, I am not going to show you that figure. <laughs> he, he lost it. But anyway, that it is our presentation. We are very glad that we're not here for an hour and a half. We're very happy that we have the opportunity to still ask for the things that we need. I wanted to first, before I close, give a a sincere thank you to all of the, uh, my, my staff, my team, and the people who have really worked together to make this division strong. I want to thank the president for the support that he's giving us on the enrollment management area. Um, uh, it, it is a truly university-wide process now, and, and it's proving that it's giving us um, the, the um, yield that, that we're expecting. And I want to thank everyone who came today for the program. And thank you so much. And have a nice day. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I have to introduce Charles, although he took my pull away. There's over here, over here. Yeah. There is Joe. Yes. Thank you so much, Tomasa. I'm from Arizona. We don't know what a pool is. Sorry. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Um, good afternoon. I'd like to add my uh, uh, welcome and thanks for the opportunity. It's my privilege to represent the administration and finance uh, with our requests. Um, many of you probably know this. Administration of finance is the second largest division in the institution behind academic affairs. We have over 25 unique business sort of entities that are very diverse and very complex. We're labeled as institutional support in the WICHE classifications, and that's what our focus has got to be. So I continue to press upon our themes with the division and with all of us as we set this, that we do our four C's. You heard them last year, I'm repeating them this year. Communication, customer service, collaboration, and compliance. Uh, when I started, the team and I, we came together with a new vision statement for the division, and that's stewardship with less bureaucracy. So we want to keep in compliance, but all of these involve everyone in this room. We can't communicate unless we communicate with each other. We can't continue to provide high levels of customer service without customers, our students, our faculty, our staff, the general public, parents, lots of customers in there. We must continue to collaborate with each other. We can't achieve any of these objectives, the growth that you've heard about, or any of that, without collaboration with each other, working together to solve our problems. And then in the compliance area, I'm going to say that we have to remain in compliance because we are charged, if you look in the mission, with safeguarding our assets. Everyone thinks assets belong on a balance sheet. And I'm going to argue with you that's true. And assets also belong in your facilities, the buildings, they're your assets. But I would say our greatest asset are all of you, our people, our faculty, and our staff that make the things happen on a day in and day out basis. We have to safeguard each other. And that's part of the compliance making sure the payroll, you all like that, right? Payroll every other Friday, that's, that's pretty cool. But we also have to do a lot of other things to protect each other and help each other so we can together achieve all of these things. 
So the ask this year for admin and finance is related to all growth and all expansion. You all know, you've seen out front, the steel's going up, it's reaching for the sky. Uh, there's gonna be about 93,000 additional square feet that we have to operate. The president and others, you've heard presentations, the state paid for 75% of that project out front. It's a great deal for us, right? We have the growth, we have need for classrooms, we have need for more laboratory and space. It's a great deal, but we don't have to operate it. So we have to ask for some money. 14 positions, those include all the major trades and custodians to heat and cool and clean that building. We also need money for uh, the operating systems. A lot of our contracts have to be increased because of 93,000 more square feet to heat and cool and manage. The utility bills obviously have to be paid. That includes a little bit of a rate increase, about 1.5% rate increase. We can't control that. And then finally, we did receive another gift, the Rothenberg building in Atlantic City, but again, we have to operate it, and so that's the request for that. Uh, we continue to try to be more transparent. You heard from the president that we are trying to achieve about a $9 million spend in deferred maintenance. Our campus is aging. We're coming up on our 50th anniversary. And so with that, that you're gonna have to invest in more. You all see the buckets in the hallway with the roofs. You all see the bathrooms that need to be renovated. And so we come up with this. And Nakubo has about a standard of 4% of your operating budget should be set aside. And that calculates to about eight, nine, million dollars, but as you grow, that number is going to need to grow too. So we, we're doing a pretty good job. This is our request for this year for that nine million dollars. It's about 8.8 .8 million, and it includes about 4.1 million on the general operating, the roofs, the bathrooms. We work very closely. The Faculty Senate has a great committee with Susan Fahey that helps us prioritize the ADA issues. We have life safety issues, the sidewalks, you've all walked on them, and the challenge those presents where we're going to work on those some this year. Housing, obviously, every summer we do some major renovations. That's going to be about a million dollars. And then the president mentioned the Seaview renovations. Two million dollars is for the windows. That's going to help seal the place. And it's going to also help with utility costs, right? We're not going to have as leaky. Well, so we'll save money on utilities. Million dollars of this three million is the normal deferred maintenance on that hundred-year-old property. And so that, I'm going to give a shout out to the IT folks because I have to tell you, coming from a Research One university in Arizona, they do yeoman's work around what normal IT folks do. Plus, they're in charge of my microphone. So. Thank you, Charles. Welcome, everyone. Uh, it, it does actually make me very proud to stand up here because we have such a collaborative university. And the team within the Division of Information Technology Services uh, you know, really enjoys you know, being able to provide a first-rate service uh, to all members of the community, not only faculty, staff, students, and prospective students. Uh, as many of you know, our division is actually broken up into four distinct areas. We have a department that now focuses strictly on security and protecting institutional assets uh, and helping with provisioning and deprovisioning uh, as folks come and go or, or move within the organization. And we have a group that also is responsible for the infrastructure, you know, much of what you don't know behind the scenes. Uh, we also have a group that is in charge of the information systems, working very closely, obviously, uh, with admin and finance, making sure that you get that paycheck, uh, but also making sure that you have communication and email and wireless connectivity. And then the, the largest group is our technology support group, uh, they uh, focus on uh, the help desk, uh, providing the infrastructure for our computer labs and our classrooms. And then, of course, the video productions team is part of that that produced that wonderful video that we got to see earlier uh, this afternoon. And then lastly, our information systems team, which is responsible for the banner ERP. Uh, so it's a really great group, and I'm very uh, proud to uh, be able to be a part of it. Uh, in terms of our mission, our primary objective uh, within the division is to support uh, you in the ways of being able to enhance the existing infrastructure uh, and always be looking to find ways to uh, be more creative and innovative to allow for efficiencies through the use of technology. Uh, we are also very focused now on uh, technology support for accessibility purposes uh, and wherever possible aligning our resources uh, when it comes to equipment, personnel, 
uh, and budget uh, within the institutional priorities uh, and initiatives. Our entire team you know, follows a, uh, a core value of service excellence. And that is something that our, both our student staff and our professional staff take very seriously. And that includes being responsive, uh, customer service, uh, you know, friendly, uh, respectful, and really delivering the needed solution in a timely manner. Uh, the other aspect is reliability. You know, we come from the mantra of we would never want technology to disrupt instruction. So we focus on that by being proactive and using robust technologies uh, to you know, satisfy the needs of, of all of our diverse uh, constituencies. Uh, innovation you know, is looking at ways in which we can advance uh, the state of technology within the university. We work very closely with the academic programs uh, and, and others on campus. And then, of course, security. You know, and, and this is you know, a real important focus for us right now. Uh, you know, we're working a lot to increase the awareness, uh, as I'm sure you've seen from many members of our team, um, so that none of us fall victim uh, of a phishing attack. Um, so from a security standpoint, we're consistently implementing measures uh, and, and systems designed to securely protect not only each and every one of you, but of course all of the institutional information. Um, so collectively, uh, you know, what I hope that you uh, have experienced and will continue to experience uh, is, you know, first-rate service. Now understand, in, in doing that, as the institution continues to grow, um, there is the need, you know, to, um, to grow um, some of the members of our team as well. Um, from a non-salary perspective, we have some escalating costs, and many of these escalating costs are a direct result of growth. As we increase the FTE, some software um, licensing goes up. As we increase square footage and, and you know, we have more devices, the maintenance charges for the equipment also goes up. So what you see in front of you, um, the first is the telecommunications budget, and that encompasses our internet connectivity, a redundant link for internet connectivity, so we have some fault tolerance, uh, and it also uh, is uh, additional uh, funding for um, security protection uh, at the firewall level. The ITS support services, that's just a, a new commitment that our management team wanted to make for professional development. It's really important that we're able to keep the skill set up amongst our team members. So it's a commitment of ours as part of our staff retention plan to be budgeting for professional development. On the academic computing side, this really is software licensing. Licensing for our learning management system, our Microsoft Office uh, uh, licensing contracts, uh, and, and other packages that support the academic program. On the enterprise side, uh, a big portion of this is for our uh, equipment uh, maintenance, uh, as well as uh, additional hard drive space that we uh, need to be able to support for things like your email and your data shares. And then lastly, under the institutional support, uh, this is uh, you know, allowing us to engage uh, remote uh, database administration services, uh, as well as some additional um, licensing fees that we're seeing increase for the banner system. There's three position requests, uh, and, and just like the rest of my cabinet colleagues, when I asked my team to come to the table, this list was obviously you know, quite larger. Um, but the, the, the one that we see as a top priority uh, is to increase the staff for the event support video productions team. Um, these are the folks that you see behind you, and, and do me one quick favor and give them a round of applause. They are at every event that goes on on campus, and they spend tireless hours producing the videos that you see here. So we have a definitive need to bring in additional staff to cut down on overtime and comp time. Um, so you know, I'm hoping we're able to support that need. The other is in the area of security. Um, you know, we, we've, that's a newer department for us. We need a little bit more depth uh, with an additional uh, staff member. And then the last is a business intelligence report writer. Uh, you know, there, the number of report requests that we have received um, recently has, has honestly exploded in the past year. Uh, and we anticipate no slowdown in those requests. And we'll also be moving um, to a new uh, business intelligence reporting solution. So, this, this staff is needed for that area. And then lastly, there's some additional funds for student workers. The capital projects uh, involve um, some of our annual equipment replacements. So 
Uh, every year we have uh, dedicated a fund um, to upgrade the computers, the projectors, the printers throughout our electronic classrooms and in our computer labs. So that's the first item you see there. The telephone switch upgrade is um, phone switch equipment that is really needed to support the uh, expansion of the university operations. Uh, the wireless uh, expansion, that's the second year of a five-year program that we're in right now to improve the existing infrastructure uh, and position access points uh, in the appropriate areas throughout the campus. Uh, the business intelligence reporting tool, that is a replacement for the discoverer solution that I'm sure many of you uh, utilize. Uh, and we're gonna be developing an RFP to identify the best solution um, for us to acquire. Network equipment, uh, that uh, is you know, what uh, you don't see behind the scenes. You know, many of the uh, closets have switches and routers. Uh, you know, so that, this is also the second year of a five-year plan to upgrade that equipment. And then lastly, um, our current firewall is end of life. Uh, so there's funding here to acquire a new firewall that includes a, an intrusion detection system. And that's a direct result of a recommendation from a cybersecurity assessment that was done uh, by an external auditor last year. We also have the need for replacement servers that are also on a, a uh, upgrade plan. Uh, we have some productions renovations, uh, audiovisual upgrades in the West Quad, uh, a network router replacement, uh, and we're looking at in the sports center uh, some upgrades to the audiovisual system, and that includes the size of the projectors and the audio system, because we, even though we're not going to be using that for our larger commencement, we do do open house, the day in the life, uh, and uh, other events that the athletics program is really gonna benefit from. So thank you very much. Hello everyone. I'm the last speaker, so I'll try to go quickly. You don't know that we have a little stop clock back there and we're trying to keep on time here. I have the pleasure of representing the president's office and I've had, it's been a great time this year um, serving as executive vice president and learning a whole new team of people who just do a wonderful job. So I'll be talking a little bit about um, our U university relations and marketing team, which is composed of graphics, print shop, marketing, the web, news and media relations, as well as our de development and alumni affairs. And I'll also be talking a little bit about what, we're, what our plans are for the Hughes Center, for SARTP, for institutional diversity and equity. Um, Bob's already covered information technology, but we'll also talk about information, institutional research, and our general counsel. So bear with me, I'll go quick. So here we go. We spent a lot of time this year talking about aligning priorities. So how can we think, you know, think for a minute about your car, and if you're like me, you wait until the absolute last minute to do any kind of maintenance on it, and then when you do go in and get it aligned, you realize, wow, this is working a lot better. It's a lot smoother, it's a lot easier. So much like that example, I think the cabinet this year has worked really hard to align our priorities and to dedicate our resources to a shared vision, not just in this program review process, but every day. We talk all the time, we work together really closely, and what happens when you see all of the alignment and what we've asked for, it's very similar things. We're all working towards a shared goal. So we feel in sync with each other, we collaborate, we support and we strengthen each other, and we deliver consistent messaging. That's my marketing people making sure that I get that in. Um, <laughs> and that's gonna lead to an overhaul enhanced performance. A couple of really great examples that many of you participated in is the vision tour this year. Some ways that feels like it was so long ago, so, but it was actually in this academic year when we went around the country talking about what vision the president had for our institution. Another great example is the Atlantic City Ops team. So many of you in the room are working on an operational plan for Atlantic City. We've worked through the task force and we talked about our vision, we looked at what we wanted to do, but now we're really in the, in the moment. It's time to get down to the details. And so it seems like fall 18, seems like it's a million years away, but actually we're talking about, we have to start thinking about what classes we're registering for. We're gonna start asking faculty what courses they're gonna offer in the fall of 18, probably within two weeks. So it's time, it's time to know what's gonna happen at that campus. 
And so we've had all kinds of meetings. Um, Brian Jackson works tirelessly, probably meets with everyone in the city, um, just to talk about you know, what can Stockton bring to that city. And he's putting a team together and we're all looking at not just what we bring to Atlantic City, but what does it bring to Stockton? How is all of this impact gonna have beyond just our Atlantic City campus? Um, Lolita tells me that there's been more meetings about Atlantic City than Congress has met this year. So, and, um, and I say that we have much more effective results. <laughs> So we're working to speak in one voice and to develop these key talking points about how Stockton is going to be a part of this renaissance in this great city. We're still a lot of work to be done though. We're gathering information. Um, Brian Jackson has done a survey on, from all of you about maybe you'd be interested in living in the city. Um, you know, what could we do about perhaps shared housing for faculty who um, live far away, maybe in Philadelphia, who'd want to stay over. We're also talking to targeted groups to see what are their concerns about. Is it attractive? Is it, what are the, what's unique to them? What are their concerns about security so that we can be ready when fall of 18 comes? And we're also exploring a university district for the area around our campus. This will create an area that will be zoned to support the primary functions that make up a university so that we're creating a whole community around our campus. We've also coined, well, Dan Douglas has coined, but I'm going to steal it for a minute. We've coined a term, you know, a new wave of opportunity, and that's going to be part of our marketing materials for Atlantic City, but I think it really it spans so much more. This imagery, it has universal appeal. We're talking about new waves of students, new waves of initiatives, new waves of things that are going to happen at Stockton, and it's fitting as a guiding principle for our goals. It's been said that the difference between success and failure is a great team. And I think as you've seen in the highlight video and all of you know, the cabinet colleagues that have spoken today, we have a great team and we have more on the horizon to do. For example, we've heard a lot about SARTP over the years and what we know now is that we are actually groundbreaking. It's really gonna happen, we're gonna have a building and there are great possibilities for partnerships, um, for internships for our students and for jobs for this community. So we're very excited about that. You heard just this week that the Hughes Center has brought two gubernatorial primary debates to this campus. So how exciting is that? <laughs> Such a great opportunity for our students to continue the already wonderful work we do with political engagement and it enhances our university's reputation and reach. Our institutional work, research folks are working on a model for predicting on, uh, retention as well as predicting what kind of students we should be recruiting. And I think this is important. When you saw that chart and you saw how we were gonna to get to 10,000 students, one of the ways to do that is to maintain the excellent retention that we already have. So we can't let that go. We have to make sure that the Stockton experience stays the same for all of our students as we grow because that's what makes it so special here. And so we're committed to finding some models to help us with that. Our institutional diversity and equity team has done a really great job this year. They've really expanded their collaborative efforts to improve the search process to make sure that it's inclusive. Um, and we've also been key with our Stockton Safe Initiative along with Student Affairs and the Campus Police. Um, the next step for Stockton Safe is to launch our bias response team. This was a promise we made to our students and we made it happen well within our deadline. Um, and we're very excited to um, work towards having a, a centralized place where students can report bias, but more, you know, more importantly, hopefully, to reduce any bias incidents through education and help make this a safe campus where all of our students and all of our community feel protected. For development, um, number one, excellent fiscal stewards this year and are not asking for any additional funding. <laughs> But we are, of course, going to keep our foot on the gas and increase our initiatives. So we're increasing alumni engagement, not just in alumni coming to events, which of course is wonderful, but alumni and volunteering at events. We had this past week at Day in a Life, 15 alumni volunteers excited, engaged, active, running around trying to recruit students to this place. And it was a great experience to watch. The student, everywhere I go, every event I'm at, alumni come up to me and tell me how proud they are to be of Stockton. They're parents of students, parents of alums. It's just, it's like a great feeling to feel, to be part of this great place and we want to continue to do that. 
We also are going to continue our um, work with the Women's Leadership Council. This has been championed by our First Lady Lynn Kesselman and Jessica Cowell, and we're creating opportunities for women to be mentors, to have professional development, and to cultivate philanthropy for, for young women and for women, you know, my age, a little more seasoned. So we're, we're excited about that. I'm going to transfer into a little bit into our university uh, relations and marketing. And while we have practiced you know, fiscal responsibility through all of the different um, president offices that I've talked about very briefly, none are asking for additional dollars. But we do want to ask for dollars where dollars are needed because it's important to invest in ourselves in order to grow. So when we look through the, the campaign that we have for our Choose campaign that all of you have seen, we feel like it's, it's an example of how we can expand on this wonderful campaign and really be effective with, um, with growing our campus, growing our reach, and expanding to new students. We want to build on the momentum that we already have. If you take a look at this, what I'm supposed to tell you here is that the yellow is when we were marketing. So when we have marketing dollars out in the world, the yellow, go, we go up. <laughs> so we're, we want to continue to build on that momentum uh, and really use some effective dollars in our, in our campaign. So, in order to do that, we're going to think about how are we going to market this Atlantic City campus? And how can we capitalize by marketing in Atlantic City, how can we capitalize that for all of our, all of our campuses? We get word out, we're going to have 8 million visitors driving by a campus in Atlantic City, and how can we get them to know more about all that Stockton has to offer just by having them walk by? So what we're going to do is have a sample. This is one, a postcard that's going out soon, but it's just a sample of the kinds of things that we can do to market our shore vibe, the urban life, and reinforce the image that Stockton is a distinctive place. In order to do that, we have to ask for some money. And um, you know, I was a little apprehensive going in, because this is a big ask. What you might not know is this is the entire marketing budget right now for the campus. It's just to put things in perspective. So we're asking to double it. And I thought that was going to be, you know, uh, that people were going to say is a little crazy. But that's not what happened. As a matter of fact, everybody did my work for me, which was awesome. And they said, yes, absolutely. This is what we need to do in order to grow, in order for all of us to reach our goals. So we're going to have, um, we're asking for $180,000 for a mixed media approach that's going to include outdoor, television, radio, digital, print ads, tremendous social media, and public relations to target our current and prospective students, guidance counselors, parents, people all in and around New Jersey, outside of New Jersey, and internationally. We're also going to increase our transfer advertising and recruitment. As you know, we had some very successful pilot programs last year that were, did a great job in converting our transfer students. And our transfer numbers look very strong right now. We want to continue that work and have it part of our permanent funding. We're also asked for additional dollars to support some student workers. We have some very successful social media interns. You might have seen them around and about. And we want to uh, replicate that model, not just because it's a great use of resources, but it's a great learning experience for them. And we want to make sure that we're supporting that. So that's what I have. That's our request. Thank you all. What we wanted to do is a, sort of a continuation of, of last year. We asked each of our panelists to answer two very um, broad questions, as, as briefly but as uh, sort of uh, thoroughly as possible, meaning uh, what is the greatest challenge that your uh, division or office will face in the upcoming fiscal year, as, what is, as well as what is the greatest opportunity you will face. So we'll begin with Lori, if we can have Lori address the challenge, and then we'll work our way down and then kind of reverse for the next question. Um, I think the greatest challenge for academic affairs is to develop the new programming that's going to help us be strong um, in enrollment. And that's, that's a lot of work to do. Um, I'm very confident because our faculty are so excellent. Um, so we're going to provide resources to the faculty to help develop ideas, and uh, we're going to be smart and strategic about enrollment growth. That will be what we'll be focusing on in the next year. Great. Okay. Um, I think that our greatest challenge um, despite all of the efforts that the president has made to give us a very hefty, what I think is a scholarship program, we still are looking at um, a gap between the, what students are eligible for 
and what the real cost of the university, attending the university is. So that is something that we're studying, that we're focused. The president has been absolutely great in, in helping us use the dollars that we um, had and, and kind of move them from you know, one way to the other. But we do are funding a greater number of students, but uh, I think we, that is one of our greatest um, fears. Thank you, challenge. For, uh, for us in admin and finance, I think uh, one of the greatest challenges is this rapid growth we're talking about and expanding. When I was hired five years ago, it wasn't to buy and sell a casino. So um, <laughs> it's been a lot of time doing that, but opening up a campus from scratch, it's exciting. I'll talk about that more in the opportunity section, but it is a challenge. How do you staff it? How do you fund it? The president said, you know, no money from, uh, for operating yet right now. We're asking, don't, don't forget that. We are asking the legislature and the governor for money. But it is a challenge to try to grow that fast and, and open up a campus in, in two years, basically. So. And, and not at all to sound repetitive to Charles, uh, but from uh, the Division of Information Technology Services perspective, uh, with bringing online, uh, you know, a number of new buildings in, in a short period of time, and then you know, also maintaining the, uh, the more traditional day-to-day -day activities, one of the things that we see as a challenge is both the recruiting and the retention of a skilled IT staff. Mm -hmm. you know, it comes as no surprise that the competition for skilled individuals uh, you know, you know, across multiple industries now is, is quite high. Um, so that's something that you know, specifically for us we see as a potential challenge. So I think my theme is similar. I mean, the challenge, that the first word that always comes to mind when we think about challenge is funding. When we talked about all of the different requests that we all had, none of them were for superfluous, crazy things. Maybe the pool, but otherwise, you know. <laughs> but, the pool. but they were, you know, it was, it was serious things that could really impact our students in a positive way, and we wish that we could do all of them every year. So, but we're not, we can't. So how do we choose what the right things to do? But I think the other challenge when we talk about our new campus is how do we not spend so much time focusing on our new campus that we don't think about everything that we're doing here um, in Galloway and at all of our other instructional sites and how do we make all of you feel a part you know only a very few people are going to be working in Atlantic City we spend a lot of time talking about it but <laughs> it will have an impact on all of us and on, on the culture of Stockton the Stockton experience and we need to keep thinking about that how we can um, invest in that and how we can feel that students who get their degree from Stockton Atlantic City will have a similar kind of culture while it's still distinct to the students who get their degree here in Galloway. You can remain standing okay. and you can <laughs> address the first, uh, the next question of the greatest opportunity. Well, but I think, you know, our, some, our greatest challenge is also our greatest opportunity. I mean, we are at a wonderful place here. It's a wonderful place to work. And how often do you get to be part of something like this, where we start a new campus and we all get to be involved in its building and its shaping? So I'm just, you know, incredibly excited and grateful to work with this kind of, this kind of wonderful people doing these wonderful things. And I think one of the greatest opportunities that we have is, is working with all of you uh, being able to use data analytics and business intelligence to really uh, help you make more informed decisions uh, and drive enrollment growth uh, with the use of technology. So I encourage you to take advantage of us and, and utilize us to, uh, you know, our, our skill set that we have to support you. So I said earlier, you know, uh, my opportunity is going to be similar to my challenge, like Susan said. You know, it's like that in everything in real life. Like for those of us who have been married, it's a challenge and an opportunity. So that's a joke. <laughs> okay, all, right. all right. So, so with the opportunity, though, not only to be part of it, a dynamic, exciting, we're going to, we are setting the future for not only Stockton University, Atlantic City, Atlantic County, and New Jersey, but I really think we're setting the future for higher education in the United States. And so I really believe this is a huge opportunity. And for fine tuning it, we're going to be able to diversify our revenue, which is key going forward. We cannot live on the backs of students and state appropriation anymore. We've got to diversify our revenue, and this is a great opportunity to do so. Okay. For uh, those of us who lived around here when we all did everything, you know, we did produce our own flyers, we made our own phone calls. For me, I think the greatest opportunity is the 
the working in collaboration and having additional support and not having to do the press release and not have you know to do the things that um, normally we did when when we were kind of alone and and we didn't have as many resources so I do welcome the collaboration and the support of everyone and I think that with the expansion of facilities um, we see the opportunity for greater uh, increase in enrollments and I think that um, that would take us to the right place. Thank you. Thank you. Earlier this week, a group of us went to Camden to a symposium on anchor institutions and the influence that they have on communities. And um, I asked the panel a question. I said, how do you get on the ground with the community and figure out what to do that will work? And um, they just didn't say anything. And Alex, who is sitting next to me, goes, you stumped them, <laughs> right? But then they said, it is really hard that you don't know what to do and you're going to fail a lot, um, but it is so worthwhile. Um, so that I think is, it sounds like a challenge, and it is, but it's the greatest opportunity because we don't know the impact. There's an impact out there that we don't know, um, but we can be a big part of it. And like Charles, you know, we're kind of setting the stage for what a university is. What is a university? We can do the part, like the challenge is building those academic programs. We know how to do that, but really working with the community like that, um, that's, that's where the opportunity lies. So thank you all. Uh, we uh, <laughs> we want to give the audience now a chance to ask questions. We have microphones set up at both sort of ends of the stage, so please feel free to step forward, and we will address the questions as best we can. We have all the experts here, so now's the time to ask away. Mine's to Bob, and out of pure ignorance, what is a business intelligent report, and from whom are you getting these requests? <laughs> <laughs> so a, a business intelligence report uh, is utilizing institutional data, you know, whether it be looking at trends of our enrollment you know, over the last five years or how much we're spending on technology. And honestly, the requests come from across the entire institution. I, Absolutely. It, it's generally internal. We must have done a, a great job, colleagues, so I don't see anyone standing in front of the microphone. The, the question was, is university district a trend or a thing? And we've decided it's a thing. So. <laughs> Not to be confused with a doohickey or widget. Well, if there are no additional questions, I'd like to ask Dr. Kesselman to. Am I on? Yes. Doesn't he deserve a round of applause? He but, pulled this all together as the institute. <laughs> There's a clock here. Okay, there really is a clock here. Um, we really do. Obviously, we all know what the challenges are. I think they've been extraordinarily articulated by the members of the cabinet who are up there. Uh, but we really do have the opportunity to make the difference. Um, the redefinition of who we are ought not in any way negatively impact what got us to where we are. We're a great liberal arts and sciences institution with professional studies. We've grown. We're not that small little college in the pines, but we have that sense of community, okay? And that ought to come with us when we go to Atlantic City, when we expand in Manahawk, and, or however much we grow. I don't see us growing much more past 10,000 here, maybe 4,000 in Atlantic City overall and the other branch camp over the course of time um, until there's more infusion. I can assure you, I'm working reasonably diligently, uh, folks know, uh, working the legislature, both sides, uh, the governor's office, to increase the support for this institution. I know that there is support there. Um, everything, though, as you can well imagine, is political. If they give to Stockton, which they have. I want to be very clear about something. We are increasing, okay, the size of this campus and the multiple campuses by more than 25%. We are getting beachfront property 
in order to promote this university. We are going to be a major regional university and at least a hundred and goodness knows, seventy-five million dollars of this okay, has been funded by the state of New Jersey. No other public institution in this state got that kind of capital infusion and that was from the governor and it was also from the legislature. So notwithstanding what you've heard, there has been a major investment in this institution. I do not think it's by surprise or by accident that we wound up with both gubernatorial primaries. What we need to do is continue to enhance the reputation of this institution. That's what you do. Every single day, you increase the value of that degree. What a great opportunity that is to be part of something like that. We're not talking about cutting back. We're not talking about layoffs. We're not talking about reducing expenses. We're just saying, okay, what are a reasonable ask above and beyond what we have for next year? Okay, that's how we're approaching this because we believe we can meet the targets that we've set. I know when you see 10,000 in front of you, it's like, hmm, how can we do that? Because we have done that in the past, a long, long time ago when we were founded and we went from 1,000 to 4,000. And I can assure you that discussion took place way back then. How could we possibly grow that quickly? Okay, how can we do that in the course of time? It's going to be easier now. Why? We have more space now, number one. Number two, we have all of you, okay? And you have seen and been part of growth. But most importantly, we need to do this for the long-term health and vitality of this institution. And if you don't believe that, I strongly encourage you, okay, to look at what's going on in other state college and colleges and universities, comprehensive universities, or small private colleges and universities across this nation. We are in a good place. Many of the national awards that we received as a result and the accolades and the achievements that we've received have helped to put our name on the map. And that's important. It makes your job more valuable and it makes the degree for our students more valuable. And that's what we're about ultimately. Okay, I don't mean in any way, shape, or form to minimize any of our standards by any stretch of the imagination. I think we need to always enhance standards, expect more from our students, so that when they get out of here, they are ready for, quote, the real world. Because what we need, and if you can't buy into this now, then I don't know if anyone ever will, we need engaged, thoughtful, intelligent students leaving here so that they can be part of a society that discusses issues in a thoughtful, engaged, intelligent manner. We need it now more than we have ever needed in the history of this country. So, yes, we have an opportunity to continue to do that as well as any kind of institution like that. And I want to thank all of you, and especially the cabinet. There are other members of the cabinet here who are all part of this, uh, all part of what we just put forth, as well as deans and directors and faculty members who put their name and blood and sweat and tears into what you do each day. It is appreciated and we are going to be able to meet the goals and objectives we have put forth. So thank you for your time, attention today, and we look forward to a real prosperous year. One caveat, one more time. These are what? Requests. We will fill you in on the final numbers when we get the final numbers. We're going to try to meet all the requests, though. Thank you very, it's, very it's much. It's always again. difficult to follow him when he <laughs> finishes up, but I do want to thank we'll all the step. people who helped make today possible. And the credits are going to roll. You can applaud. You can weep. Get your tissues out. So thank you, everyone, for coming tonight.